Over the past few years, artificial intelligence has become increasingly complex and capable of performing more and more difficult tasks. From AI-generated images and voices, Bro, this podcast f sucks. to even music, virtually no area of human expression has been untouched by AI. And now with sophisticated large language models such as ChatGPT and Bing Chat, it's now possible for the first time to have AI generate code. And since I'm a programmer, I started to wonder if AI can beat me when it comes to writing code. But there's only one way to find out. In order to determine who is a better programmer, I have created three programming challenges that both me and an AI will be tackling. Once we complete the challenge, we will see whether the AI was able to actually generate a functioning program. And if it was, we will check how well it wrote the code, and then compare it to what I wrote. So without further ado, let's begin the first challenge. All right, this first challenge is to write a vector implementation. ChatGPT is almost done already, as you might expect. If you're unfamiliar with a vector, it is a kind of data structure that is just an array that can change in size, also known as a dynamic array. Since I only know a couple of languages, I decided to just do this challenge in C++. Now I know C++ already has vectors in the standard library, but it's just a simple starting challenge. Alright, we both are now done, and it took me a full 10 minutes to get this written. So obviously ChatGPT has a speed advantage when it comes to writing code. If we look at the code we wrote, you could see we create an empty vector to store integers, and then add some values to the back of the vector, as well as deleting from the back. And if we look at the output, it looks just as you would expect. Now I know it's not the most featureful vector, but it gets the job done. If we take the code ChatGPT generated, it works just like ours. But things get interesting when we look a little bit closer at the code itself. Not only is the code slightly more concise than mine, when the array itself needs to be resized, the code is actually significantly more efficient, because the array I used in my code to store the original elements is just the original array. Just having this information would have let me make my program a lot better. So clearly for simple algorithms, AI can prove to be quite helpful. And because of that, I think I'm going to give the win to ChatGPT. But let's now move on to the second, more difficult challenge. Alright, in this challenge we have to write a program to encrypt and decrypt images. And this time, to spice things up, we are going to be using Python instead of C++. Definitely not because it's easier for this or anything. Now, when I gave ChatGPT the prompt to write this program, it actually kind of cheated by just using a cryptography library to do all of the hard work. So I asked it to rewrite it, and it did. But we will see in a minute if the rewritten program actually works. Now, for the program that I wrote, I decided to take an unorthodox approach to this challenge by modifying the individual color components of each pixel with a randomly generated number that is dependent on a seed that is an encryption key. So whenever an image is encrypted, it just ends up looking like a bunch of noise, as you will see in a short moment. But let's finish the code first. All right, the code is complete, and it took me a total of 26 minutes, which isn't too bad considering all of the tinkering I had to do. Let's run the program so I could show you how this works. All right, here I have an image for us to encrypt. Sorry, I had to do it. So in the program, if I select the encryption mode by typing E and give the name of the image, it will now generate an encrypted image in the same directory, as well as giving us the magical decryption key. Now. If I select the decryption mode instead, I could type the name of the encrypted image as well as the key that was previously generated, and it generates a decrypted image, and it looks exactly the same as the original. Now the code that ChatGPT came up with works too, although it's a bit cumbersome to use. The only real problem I have with the ChatGPT program 
is that the encrypted image is unviewable, since it encrypts the image header that allows the image to be viewable in the first place. So for this challenge, even though ChatGPT wrote a slightly less convenient program, the code itself was very concise and easy to read. So this challenge will be a tie. So as of right now, ChatGPT is winning, but we still have our third and final challenge to get to. And it's the most intense one yet. So let's begin. All right, as you saw from the title, the grand finale is to write a fully functional game. Now the idea for this game is simple. You are a square in the middle of the screen who has a gun, and you can shoot it in all four cardinal directions. You will need this because the enemies will spawn on each of the four sides and try to reach you, but you can shoot them before they kill you. And your goal is to remain alive as long as possible. It sounds like a fairly simple game, but giving a prompt like this to ChatGPT was a challenge. So I wrote out a paragraph long prompt with as much detail and precision as I could, and then gave it to ChatGPT. And it actually wrote a program, but we will see how well it works in a bit. Now my approach to this challenge was simple. Keep things simple. I ended up only needing a couple of functions, and I tried to keep everything as neat as possible. It's important when writing programs to take different approaches depending on what you're writing. For example, working on my 2D Minecraft project requires an enormous amount of forethought and planning. But something fun like this doesn't. Realizing that every project is unique is important to being a good programmer. Anyways, enough of my rambling, let's finish this game. Alright, the program is finally complete, and it took a grand total of 55 minutes, with 220 lines of code. Let me run the program so I could show you what it looks like. This game is about what you'd expect for an hour worth of coding, but it is fully functional. If I end up dying, it actually cuts to a game over screen, where I have the opportunity to start over. Now since I'm a child, I'm going to quickly see how high of a score I can get. Sixty-one. I mean, it's all right. Since I had my fun, let's see what ChatGPT was able to generate. Well, I mean, at least it was able to boot up. Yeah, I think it's pretty clear that ChatGPT has a hard time creating something with this amount of detail. But I was kind of expecting that. Even the code itself is a bit of a mess. So I think it's pretty clear that we won this final challenge. So overall, who is better at programming, an AI or me, a real programmer? Well, I think the answer is both. Clearly AI is going to, or already has, become something that will be integrated into nearly everything. And although I'm not the most happy about it, I think it's important moving forward to use it to our strengths, and to appreciate the things that it will help automate. And with that, we have reached the end of the video. I really hope you guys enjoyed this style of video, if you have any feedback, just let me know in the comments below. Thank you guys as always for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye